This is an example of a controlled burn out here in Tipton, Iowa. Someone thought it would be a great idea to drive around these orange barrels and into the construction zone, driving through freshly poured concrete. The Mississippi cresting for the third time already this year is moving into LeClaire Park. The bike path completely submerged. We're here in the warehouse of the Riverbend Food Bank where that big number was just revealed moments ago. It is cold out here in Davenport. You can probably see I've been out here for two hours now. It is getting colder and colder uh, since the sun has gone down. Veteran runners, they're not the problem. It's the first timers, the ones who don't train, who just wake up and say, I want to run the VIX. This entire area around City Hall was blocked off all afternoon as police gathered evidence. We counted at least nine shell casings. Things like this usually don't happen outside the police department. Things like this usually don't happen in Moline. A construction worker with the I-74 project tells us off camera the shooting between three cars started just off the interstate exit onto River Drive. He remembers hearing at least three gunshots and then two of the cars speeding down the street. The third stopping at City Hall where the 22-year-old man was shot and killed in his car. His mom and dad have lost their son. I, I can't imagine what they're going through. It, it's tragic. It's another senseless violence of guns that these kids are turning to these days. One of the bullets went right through the window at the Kone office building nearby. Luckily, no reports of anyone hurt inside. Local 4 News spoke with people who live and work in the downtown area who say they're not too concerned for their safety, though what happened today is shocking. Having kids and going out trick-or-treating tonight and it's like, you know, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. Like. It's just broad daylight shooting. Not knowing the exact circumstances as to what led up to said shooting, um, you know, it's it makes the mind go in a million different directions. Rock Island County Sheriff Jerry Busos confirmed that Jason Van Dyke is here in this building behind me, the Rock Island County Jail, three hours west of Chicago. Now, the decision to move Van Dyke here was made because of his high profile case, not because of any safety concern or threat against him. That according to the Cook County Sheriff's Office. Now, here's Jason Van Dyke's new mugshot after being transferred to the Quad Cities. He was convicted by a Cook County jury on Friday of second degree murder and 16 counts of aggravated battery, one for each time he shot Laquan McDonald back in 2014. The case outraged the Chicago community once the dash cam footage showed contradictions in the story given by officers that night. The judge immediately revoked Van Dyke's bail after his conviction, and he has been in custody ever since. Van Dyke is due back in court on October 31st in Cook County. His sentencing date has not yet been set. Sheriff Bustos tells us he believes Van Dyke will remain here at Rock Island County Jail until sentencing. In Rock Island, James Sears, Local 4 News. When it hit, when the car hit, it sounded like a tire blew and it sounded like a, they got reared in. We didn't know it was people at first. Holly Cunningham is one of many employees at the Quad City Inn who are shaken up after two pedestrians were hit by a car and killed last night at nearby Brady Street and Veterans Memorial Parkway. It's not worth crossing six lanes of traffic. I mean, there's literally a light right there. Um, it would be much easier and much safer if you just cross there. You know, I mean, it's less than a block from where you see a lot of these people crossing Brady. The two men were trying to cross this dangerous six lane intersection when they were hit. Workers in the area say it's not the first time this has happened and it'll keep happening unless people take safety more seriously. The manager of the Quad City Inn did not want to appear on camera. She tells us this incident hit too close to home. Last month, my dad hit the car for, you know, so we have to, city has to do something because nighttime it's too dark over there, you know. So city has to put some lights over there. That's I have to tell you, you know, because people it's, this is a fifth one. She and her employees are calling on the city to take action to make sure people are safe when crossing the street. But those we spoke with feel the problem won't ever be fixed. You have to watch the lights down there on 59th, then you got to watch the lights up here on uh, Veteran. And if they're both not red, you might as well kiss your butt goodbye. In Davenport, James Sears, Local 4 News. Jamie Drovashevich of Kelowna has been bowling since she was 11 years old. This is my life. Jamie's been competing for Special Olympics as part of Illinois' delegation for about that long. She's won many trophies and even gold medals. We caught up with her and her mom at QC Family Entertainment in Moline. Do you have a strategy? Fuck it. Uh, behind a second pin and try it hard. Yeah. She just 
naturally picked it up and just at a very young age became a very good bowler. And I, I don't understand how, but she just did it. I'm good. <laughs> This is Jamie's first bowling ball. She got it 12 years ago from her brother-in-law, and it cemented her love of the sport. Shane Kern has been her coach for a couple years now. Jamie calls him one of her best friends. He even enrolls with her in tournaments. How do you get yourself ready? Breathe and, and take five minutes and uh, ready ball. The one year at the state Olympics for Special Olympics, she bowled like a 165, and everybody around her was just like, she was pretty young then, and everybody was just hushed and watching her. And we walked out, and you could hear people talking about her. And the one guy, one guy said, "That little girl's like a professional." So it makes you really proud. I'm crying. In between competitions, Jamie hones her craft once a week. In the winters, in a women's bowling league, the John Deere Deers. She loves it, especially winning. So when you go to Seattle, you're going to come back with a gold medal. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> A really good bowler out there, too. Jamie leaves for Seattle tomorrow with her mom, and she's excited. The 2018 Special Olympics USA Games run Sunday through Saturday. In the studio, James Sears, Local 4 News.